This is Culture Unmasked. I'm Madison Hawthorne with uh, Golden Tree Publishing, and I'm here with uh, Newman. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, class. Good afternoon and good evening. Uh, this is Chris Newman. I am a, a publisher, uh, a, a artist, um, and I do creative writing, creative drawings, just anything creative. Uh, you can find me on the platform of Instagram, and that is at uh, C Newman two one six. Again, that's my at. And then um, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Ray. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Ray Mike Youngblood, aka Ray's Arts. I'm a digital freelance illustrator. You can find my work on Instagram at R-A-I-Z underscore arts. That's Ray's Arts. Um, and soon, uh, very soon, I will be launching my Patreon and my merch store. So look out for it. Cool. So uh, anything you guys seen um, over the, the holiday or anything like that? I know um, I know. I've seen that um, that Wonder Woman. I don't know if anybody's going to be doing but um, yeah, I saw, I saw that. Wonder Woman. I saw Wonder Woman. Yeah, I saw it. What do you think? Yeah, I'm of the two percent that didn't hate it. I don't think it was a great movie. I don't even think it was like a good movie. But I didn't hate it. I, I don't think yeah. it be hated. I I mean yeah I didn't I mean that's a hate for strong words I can't hate a movie because it didn't do nothing to me <laughs> like you know what I mean yeah, <laughs> right. but but but, uh, but, uh, but I'll say um, I definitely um, it's down at the bottom of the DC movies which is you know all the DC movies are basically at the bottom so <laughs> so it, I don't know what happened between the first one and the second one I don't know if COVID messed up the production and the editing. I don't know, but I just, I had some issues with it. I'm on the yeah. same boat. I, I think it had to be the, the editing. It was long for no reason. There's so many, like, drawn-out parts. Like, I, I don't know. I didn't like the character. Develop. It, it just, yeah. all, it made sense. I don't The know. crazy thing yeah. about it is it, it was so, it was long. But they still couldn't get the character development right. Like, like usually, right? No. Like, if you got a long movie, you can you can build the character, right? Because you have more time. <laughs> but they couldn't even do that. I don't know what happened. It was crazy. Yeah. I feel like um, Patty Jenkins needs to watch uh, more uh, anime so she can see the the bad ways to power scale and the bad ways to reveal powers and the good ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she, she needs to, she needs to look into that because uh, it, it did not work for me. Like almost none of it. Are, I was, was um, I was about the movie or or not? Nah. What's that? But let's talk, man. All right. Well, definitely. Before we go any further, everybody who's listening, uh, major spoilers ahead. Okay, for spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Indeed. Um, so yeah, just check the movie and then come back and listen to us. We'll still be here. Y'all gone yet? Y'all gone yet? All right, cool, cool. So, <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned, uh, anime, um, whenever you were talking about that movie. Because essentially, man, Wonder Woman 84, 82, 84, 84, uh, yeah. it was essentially, it was essentially if Dragon Ball went wrong, man. That was that, that's all I saw in the entire movie. I was like, oh man, it's a wish fulfillment movie. I mean, it's better than Dragon Ball Evolution, but uh, everything's better than Dragon Ball Evolution. Um, I don't think that that's a story that can really be told well anymore. You know, like monkey monkey's paw stories, stories where you get what you wish for, but it's going to turn out disastrous. I don't know that that works out well for a two hour movie format. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. like, it was just, it was really vague. You know, like, I want to be that, I want to be like Diana. So what, you were God now? And did you stay as God through, throughout the entire movie? Cause you were acting like a God. You were acting like maybe Amazonian, maybe, but a God? 
Nah, mm-hmm. you ain't no daughter of Zeus. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> and I don't understand how, how she ended up uh, evolving into Cheetah from that. Um, right. I watched uh, I watched a uh, review where I think it was Chris Stuckman. Um, he's a good reviewer, and J- uh, Jeremy Johns are good reviewers on YouTube. Um, talk to them. But uh, I think it was Chris Stuckman who couldn't um, tie the, the the prologue scene to the entire movie, and I was interested in that because, like, to me, I thought that the, the prologue was one of the good things about the movie that um, tied in really well. There's there's a penalty to cheating. In Maxwell Lord and Cheetah's case, they got their powers at the expense, and of course, uh, Wonder Woman 2 with her wish, they got their powers at the extent of losing something great. You know, Maxwell Lord, he was losing his, um, his uh, vital organs. Uh, Barbara was losing her humanity. And Wonder Woman was losing her strength. And, um, you know, that was a direct result of cheating to get things that you shouldn't have. Um, right. Ironically, I think that, uh, that Wonder Woman 1984 did a better job of portraying the, um, that message of working for what you have and, and being proud of where you have more so than soul. Yeah, I saw soul too. We're going to get there. Yeah, I didn't like that move. But, uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, uh, I think that it could have been fine um, if it wasn't about wish fulfillment. Yeah, that's what I, that's why, that, that was the thing too. I don't know, like, um, I don't know how they, like, I mean, like, <sighs> That was part of it. I think that the uh the like I said, the character development, just the arbitrary just the, I mean, basically almost everything about the movie, right? Like, um they didn't have to bring old bull back from from the dead. That made no sense. One it right. did, it just did it, it made no one it made no sense because the, the wish the wishing stone could make a giant wall appear out of nowhere and make all this stuff happen. But it, it it had to make him come back in somebody else's body. Like, what was the point of that? It could have just brought him back regular then at least. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. there was no, there's no rhyme or reason to that. But the, um, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. And then, like, as far as, like, what they did with Maxwell Lord, like, they didn't need to make him a wish master. Like, they didn't even have to do that. Like, that that didn't, none of that had to happen. They could have just, and then, right. like, I, and then, like, they had him, like, losing his organs so he would get his nose leaks, like, in the comics, if he uses his, like, um, depending on what version of him you're reading, if he uses his powers a lot, he gets nosebleeds. So, it was like, 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 they tried to bring that in, I guess, for, like, people who know about the comic book character, but it's like, that doesn't even make any sense still. Like, you could have just gave him his regular powers and basically master manipulation and the ability to, like, you know, kind of control people. And that would have made him a way better villain. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, and then, it, and then, like, the thing, too, is, like, how did everything go back to normal then? Like, that don't make no sense right. either. Right? And then nobody wanted to arrest him. He's just chilling at the White House with his son at the end. Like, nobody's coming for him. I don't... <laughs> nobody's coming for him. He's not going to jail for that. He was very public with uh, what he did. You know, um, like people broadcasting was, stuff all over the world. <laughs> it literally the entire world. And so, like, what's that? Is that like an event in history? Like, is that something that people reference later on in life? Like, there, there are definitely there are five million questions with that movie, and, and I don't think we're gonna get, ask, get an answer to any of them. Yeah, no. Yeah, in my view, it would have been. It had a plot. That movie should have been made in the 80s, even though it was called 1984, because it was just, it was just so, like, they were pushing the cheesiness of um, of the guy coming back in the 80s and, like, you know, saying the closed montage. Like, I would feel like that was a reshoot. You know what I'm saying? They were, they were pushing a lot of things. There was, 
my brother said that, and it reminded uh, me of the movie uh, Wish Match, or like you said, uh, uh, Madison. Like the, that movie was done in the '90s, and it was better than the the, the whole process of the the wishes and the Wish Master. It was just it was a lot of forced things. It was forced. It was forced. It didn't it didn't have a flow to it. Just to throw throw things in there, man. And it was just I don't know. It didn't seem cohesive. Like it, it just seemed rushed. They didn't think out the how it was gonna all connect from beginning to end. You know, um, I love her as Wonder Woman. Though I think she is oh, a yeah. great Wonder Woman. I think I think all the actors did a good job. I like Kristen Wiig in the movie. I liked um, yeah the Mandalorian <laughs> as Maxwell Lord. Like I, I think he did. I think everybody that did. Is the best. Him. I, I think the, I think the, uh, everybody did the best with um, what they had to work with. You know what I mean? Like, they like they, they didn't have a lot to work with. So I'm not even like, mm-hmm. people were like, oh, Kristen Wiig can't be a villain. I thought she did all right. I mean, for what she had to work with. I think with, she did good. Yeah. Yeah, she, she didn't decide that, that that's the, how they were going to make her get her powers. <laughs> like, that wasn't, she did Right. Like, like, you know what I mean? like, I don't know. But, yeah, so, I mean... I don't, I don't know, and I, I, I will say this. So I'm glad it, I, it didn't come like the theaters are closed because I would have paid money out there to the see that. Here's the thing, though, it hit great numbers where they said they're already like, I guess, um, in development, or, or they signed the contract to do a part three. Which, okay, great. I hope. I'm usually a person who says, don't listen to what critics say. Right. But you better pay attention. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? If if people are telling you what to have in the next movie, don't listen to that. But you better pay attention to what, why it wasn't good. You should have already done that. Now, we know people in Hollywood don't always make the best decisions. It's all about the money. But this project could have been good, man. Like, it was... I don't know, man. I don't know. I got so many opinions, and my opinions aren't cohesive, man. Just like that movie, but it just man, it had potential. It had potential. Like I don't know. I think too, it's like the only like big release that's been out since quarantine that wasn't sent to the theaters that people don't really want to go to. So I think a lot of people saw it and had uh-huh. anticipation based off the first one. So like maybe like maybe I'm overreacting a little bit. I mean I, I'm not. I know I didn't like it, and it's not very good. But how not good it is might be like me basing it on how good the first one was compared to basically all the other DC movies, and then how this one is like straight um, Batman, Superman, Justice League level. Like I'm just not with it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I said, I liked it. It definitely overstayed its welcome. Um, there's no doubt about that. There's no reason that movie should have been two and a half hours long. Um, yeah. At all. Uh, oh. Without at least, like you said, um, delving more into who the characters are. Um, I think that, you know, the geeky, um, the geeky lab assistant uh, that turns evil I think that trope is overly done. Um, and I don't think it was necessary for Barbara. Um, so I don't know. Now I will admit I'm not the most keen on uh Cheetah's origins. Um I more so just remember her as a villain from uh from the old Justice League cartoon. Um yeah. I didn't read too much about her. Um, but if that's Barbara's origin, it's twenty twenty four reason we can yeah, we can we can rewrite that thing. <laughs> we can we can put some science on that story. Yeah. yeah. That's not an origin. She has think, like th- she has like three different origins for the comics, depending on what you read, but um but the origin is way better in like the comics. And the origins aren't even that good in the comics. <laughs> they're, better. they're better than uh they're better than what they did with this movie. Which I don't know why they did it that way. But um I mean if they do a third one, I'll probably still check it out because I mean Patty Jenkins I mean she does make good movies. 
I don't know what happened this time. Like, you know, I guess everybody, sometimes you miss a layup. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. like you know, it happens, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, my favorite part was when they were on, um, uh, my favorite part is when they were on the island doing that competition. I think the movie would have been better if they, like, had more stuff on, um, stop bringing everything back to the USA or 1984. If they'd have had it like it was back on in the Amazon and had a storyline with that, I think that would have been dope. Because that was my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, some of those parts dragged on, like with her um, competing. But that felt more more true to the character than that 1984. Like, she's being heartbroken after, what, 60 years or whatnot? Like, I, I don't know. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, she, she's immortal. Like, she not, she's not going to be over that by now. Like, I don't know. <laughs> not, not, not even over it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Man, y'all can't not, see that. Not over it. Not over it. But move on. That she's not going to make a monkey paw wish. I guess she didn't know she made the wish. I guess she didn't know she made the wish. But right, still, right. Yeah. the moment she saw she was losing her powers and things were going bad, she probably would have sent him back. Like, all right, dog, you know. And, and it wasn't yeah, even him, though. was injustice, Wonder Woman. This is a modern-day DC Wonder Woman. Not that injustice, evil Wonder Woman. Not Flashpoint Wonder Woman. Nah, none of that. She has a heart. She has feelings. And she's never been in love before. Give her a break. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I don't know. And there's been some fresh dramas who came past, past, past her. She could have saw that in her. Some good dude. Yeah. I mean, Steve Rogers was around back then. She could have came across to him. He went back in the <laughs> time. <laughs> It's wrong, wrong universe. But, uh, I know. I, I'm throwing, I'm, that's why I'm throwing them together. <laughs> they got to do the match, uh, the crossover. Wow. Well, um, man, that was fun. But the other thing that I saw that, that I liked was the, the movie Soul. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, the kids are so happy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. I liked it. Fly. Would you say lie? I said blah. Oh, you yeah. didn't like it? No, I didn't like that movie. I didn't hate it. No, no man. I liked it. Nah, I man. I thought it was like in no. the middle in the middle of what Pixar's done. It's probably like in the top fifteen, maybe. <laughs> but I mean it's not it's not a bad movie. I thought it was pretty good. It could have been funny. It was pretty serious. It could have been funny. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it could have been funnier. Um, no, honestly, uh, I, I, I've been told that I missed the entire point of the movie. But, um, again, y'all, spoilers, 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 spoilers. Oh, everything's spoiled. Uh, like that movie. Yeah, I said it. Oh, it's like, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm apologetic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the king of, uh, Bad opinions this week. I can be that. But, um, no, in all seriousness, while I appreciated 22's role in the movie, um, because I did, I, uh, I really wasn't a fan of Joe. Um, and here's why Joe, he, he had me at the beginning. Like, he was working his job. Good job. Finally got benefits. And then he's just like, yo. That's not what I want to do. I'm a musician. I know that I'm a musician. It's my sole purpose in life. It's the only thing that I want to do. It's the only way that I want to find purpose. Then he gets the gig of his dreams. Unfortunately, he dies. He meets 22, and he learns that that it's important to live life. But I think that undercutting the value of being focused and undercutting the value of aiming towards your goals, which I know we're going to talk about that a bit more later on. I think that undercutting those things and saying it's okay to stop and smell the roses, some people smell the roses too much. 
Oh, that's and not then what I got for the movie at all. <laughs> Man. That's not so the message to that. That's not even close. <laughs> here, so here's why I said that. Here's why I said that. Joe gets the gig, and 30 seconds after the gig, he says, oh, I thought I'd feel a little bit different in this. Is this it? And then they do the, the, the fish in the ocean uh, parable. And then Joe goes mm-hmm. save 22. Joe was not wrong for wanting to pursue that gig with all of his heart. Joe, in my opinion, like, I was completely deflated after he didn't care. It showed, to me, a huge sense of, under, like, unappreciation about this gift that he finally was able to give to the world. And he's just like, yeah, no, nah, I don't care. And after yeah, that, he didn't say that. Out. He never said he Man, didn't this is the right. message I got. Ray, me and, I feel like me and Ray watched two completely different movies. So. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> this is the message I got. This is the message I got. If I'm following the movie, this is a dude, like you said, no, he's you, a music teacher. His dream is to be, you know, bigger. You know what I mean? Actually be on stage playing with the big wigs and, and being one himself. And people are telling him, no, nah, just take a job that you get paid for. And um, so you can live and pay your bills and you're not struggling, basically, right? That was his mama. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, so, but he finally gets the gig and he's feeling great about it. He dies. He's so determined to get that gig, he refuses to basically go to the great beyond and basically fights against that the whole time. I think yes, at the end, as he at should. The, right, right, as he should. As he should, which is, let's say, I, I feel like the movie's telling people to continue to fight. But I think what it's saying is they learn, it, the movie, I think the message of the movie is that your purpose in life isn't something you do. The purpose in life is, is, is can only be basically what you assign to it and that you aren't the things you do. That's not going to complete you. Just doing one thing. It's not going to complete you. You know what I mean? Like doing one, hitting it big one time, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be the, it's not going to define you. I think that's what the movie was trying to say. Yeah, well, I'm going to watch you. I don't know. I don't know, man. If it was I, don't that, think, I don't think it was that. trying to say that. <laughs> don't go for your goals because it's not. You're not gonna be that thrilled when you get them. Like I, I don't think that was the message they were trying to say. <laughs> right, man. How how can you compare this movie to your life? Because it seems like <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see the movie. I didn't see the movie, but it seemed like the dude was unhappy. And you just, you, we started off the call today where you was just like, man, that's this job, man. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> so I would kill. <laughs> Yo, like, like, forget not going to the great beyond. I would send somebody to the great beyond if I could get a chance. <laughs> and this man goes to the great beyond, comes back, gets the gig, and then tries to chase down 22. Forget 22. You could have, you could have died. You could have died for real. You could have died for real. It would have been over. I got to see this movie. Well, as a resident atheist, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to go into it just to enjoy it because I don't I don't there's even no, say no. There's, there's, there's no God stuff involved in the movie at all. There's nothing about no, God. No, 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 not, not, not even God, but just like the whole soul. Like I said, I'm just trying to enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um... But it, it's funny how, like you saying, that you make something... You perceive it one way, <laughs> and Ray perceives it another. You said you enjoy it. He says he dislikes it from the different, per- you know, say perception. So there's no like, you know, saying right or wrong answer, man. It's just, oh, it's, it's funny, man. I, I'm, I'm sitting back with, with some popcorn in my hand, just watching Ray be mad. <laughs> man, I gotta see it though, because I, I know the kids watch it, and they're not gonna pick up on anything. It's, did it have right good music? Was the music like decent? No, no. honestly, it was barely a kids movie to be honest, because it's like it's yeah, jazz real. music. It's like jazz music, and like it's like um, like I said, it's not. I feel like it's not humorous enough. Um, 
mm-hmm. for it to be a great kids movie. Like it's not enough humor in it for it to be a great kids movie. So yeah. where was it? Now it's on Disney Plus, right? Yes. Okay. I don't even remember it being marketed. I just remember it was, I saw like on some Instagram page, oh, a great black movie. I didn't know it even came out. It just had a great black animation movie. So I didn't see it like, um, I didn't see it anywhere. I didn't see it push like I saw Wonder Woman. Um, so I didn't even know it came out. And then one day, uh, Bia, uh, my kid's mom was like, yeah, the kids are watching. I was like, oh man, cool. But I was busy. So I got to sit back and watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, guess we could just, I think uh, the marketing definitely would have been pushed a bit more. Um, had we have been in the, in, not in COVID, but, uh, the soundtrack and the animation are beautiful. Like it's, it's definitely worth watching. I just had that gripe. But my fault, Madison. Go ahead, bro. No, I was going to say that's a good, that's a good segue because we were talking about today. We we're just talking about, um, the, the main topic we want to talk about was golf. Um, so. I mean, I, I do agree with Ray. You should not give up on your goals. <laughs> you Ever. Your goals. But, um, Ever. But, but also, I don't think that's what the movie was trying to say either. But it, <laughs> well, why, well, why not see that, Madison? Why did why I see it then? <laughs> hey, hey, it's art. It's open for interpretation. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what your experience was. You know your experience watching that movie. I just had a different one. <laughs> oh, that was great. I gotta see it, man. I gotta see it. Yeah, yeah check it out. I mean you're going you're gonna be the deciding factor. He's gonna be right in between us. He's gonna be right, right, right in between what I said and what you said. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> I went in thinking about okay, I don't, the whole soul thing, and I'm like, okay, it's soul music. I'm listening. I, I, I can't wait to hear the music. Now y'all got me about to have to watch the movie like with a uh, a legal pad and take notes. Like, oh no, 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 no. That's not a goal. Well, that's not what he meant. I'm not doing none of that. I'm going to enjoy the movie. But like I always go into the Jordan movie. Was the story cool? And was the music good? Or even not even the music, the score and everything. I love that about like did they add the score in perfectly? Because I watch movies for that, like the dramatic sound. Did they do that right? Did, was the editing right? Does, does it make sense? So I'm gonna go in just for enjoyment. I'm not going in to to uh, rip it apart. Maybe the second yeah. watch, yeah, but. Cause, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> man, it feels like y'all watch two different movies, like you said, man. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to see it now. I'm about to watch it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, I guess we could get right into it. I mean, just talking about goals, since it's the new year, you know, everybody likes to, you know, set their goals now. You should be setting goals all the time, but I think the new year is a good, like, starting point or, like, just mentally for people to, like, say, okay, you know, January 1st to December 31st, you know, you can carve out it. It's like a, you know, set in time. And I think, um, you know, mentally, that's why New Year's is such a big time for people to, like, make their goals and their, I guess they call them resolutions. But I guess we could talk a little bit then about kind of some of the goals we have. Um, Ray, I know you actually mentioned some earlier. Um, is that part of, part of your goals for um, for coming up this year with the Patreon and and the um, the merch store and all that? Absolutely. Um Earlier uh, in the summer, I was part of a Zoom call that uh, was basically teaching young creatives and um, young professionals how to open up their own um, Shopify stores, Uh, which if you guys don't know, um, Shopify, Printify, um, they're online storefronts that they do charge a percentage, um, I believe it's like 2.8% or something like that. Um, But they make your merchandise for you. And so you don't have to actually have any of the merchandise on hand. You don't have to buy like a bulk of 60 t-shirts or anything like that. Um, It's actually printed per customer. So if you create a t-shirt shop, 
you only sell five shirts. Well, you only sell those five shirts and you don't have to worry about paying a bunch of money on the front end in order to get a little bit of um, return on investment um, in the long run. Um, so it's like, uh, granted, of course, print on demand. Yeah, it's, it's a print on demand um, type shop. You don't have to pay like, you don't have to pay a monthly fee or anything like that. Um, you just have to pay the percentage up front. Um, and then the rest of it would get automatically, um, sent to your bank account. Um, they do have other packages where you can pay. I believe that those packages help you with, um, your marketing as well. And it also, um, gets rid of the, the printify Shopify part of the website. Like it's actually, you're paying for the domain. Um, and those are more, uh, costly. Um, but for someone who's just starting out, i.e. me, um, it's a great way to get my foot in the door and to put extra residual uh, money in my pocket without having to actually go out and create the stuff by hand. Um, so definitely look out for that. Um, Madison Newman, I can definitely send you guys a link to that video. It was extremely informative. Um, the oh, guy who recorded it was actually one of my uh, childhood friends. So we went to elementary school together and, uh, yeah, he's just, he's been really looking out. Um, I believe I posted a little earlier in the summer um, a few characters from this thing called Melanated Mathematics. Uh, that was actually for his brand. Um, he hired me on to design five characters for him. And so I did that, and he's turned them into puzzles. He put them in his math books. He has his own math book. Um, he put them on T-shirts, on hoodies, and uh, it seems to be going pretty well for him. Um, now, obviously, it's not a get rich um, scheme. It's not anything like that. Like, you will actually start to push and market your stuff um, and get it out there. But again, it's a great opportunity to make money while you sleep if you um, really just do your stuff right. Um, and the um, Patreon. With the Patreon, um, it's actually something that I've been secretly uh, working on for a couple of months now. I've been studying other Patreons and uh, figuring out how their tiers work and seeing what works and what doesn't work for me. Um, there's still a few minor tweaks that I, I might do, uh, but it still shouldn't get get out of the way of a um, January uh, release for both of them. So um, when we do, you know, like our January podcast, um, Halfway through a month at the latest, I'll be able to give everyone uh, links to those stores. So please support whenever it comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, be on the lookout. Things set up or if anything that you've been um, mulling over that you're trying to lock down for the new year. Dude, I'm always trying to get my hands into something. And it's not like, you know what I'm saying, one of those, oh, I'm a hustler type thing. Um, like you said, the, the, the main thing is goals. I've always been taught goals since, like, sixth grade. Uh, what I was never taught was to reevaluate goals and how to go about it. It was just, I was always just told, set goals, set goals. How do you set goals? Um, what's attainable? Anything's attainable. But um, more recently, and I'll say like in the last decade, I've just been uh, writing things down and checking things off. Because you can write down whatever you want, but you got to check things off. Um, and, you know, my goals have kind of realigned um, in terms of I always wanted to work in a corporation uh, and work my way up. My goal has now changed where I don't want to work for a corporation, but I want to be that person uh, up. So talking with people, talking with uh, friends, I even got into politics in the last, like, uh, three years, where I want to almost um, be a councilman, where I can kind of affect change and influence people. And I'll say that would influence people to set goals for themselves within their personal lives, within their community. Uh, with all that said, you know, I've been knocking things out. I've been um, listening to a lot of podcasts, reading books. Uh, a goal I do now is I listen to, um, or I don't have time to just sit and read a book. 
I fall asleep when I read books. It, my body is so weird. Whenever I read like a few pages, I start dozing off. So I listen to audio books. So I bought a bunch of audio books. I listen to maybe two or three chapters uh, a week. You know, I don't want to just burn through it. I really want to understand it. Um, but with, with all that said, my goal is now to re- release my book next year. Three different top uh, versions, three different artists. I'm working with the editor now. I've written everything that I wanted to do down checked it all off. I've added to my goals. Like I said, now I want to to go and be a council person. I want to own real estate. So I'm in a whole different path with one attempt to educate people and to give myself power. And not, you know, obviously they say power corrupts. But, um, you know, I'm just going to be corrupted, I guess. I don't know. But I feel I'm going to help a lot more people along the way with like what, what Rages did with giving us that, you know, the information of uh, Shopify, you know, um, how can I get more information out? So my, my thought was always being a corporate world. Hey, I can direct people a certain way, but I'm always going to be under this entity who at any point can just snap their finger and I'm gone. Now I'm trying to have power, trying to have that sense of um, creating, generating information. You can't, like you brought up that parable with the fish. You can't, um, you can teach people how to fish. It's going to help them better than just giving them fish. So if I learn so many things that that I can give to people, you know, that's going to help them. But understanding the goals, um, so, yeah, my book is done. Uh, it's been, you know, I'm working with the editor now. I'm trying to make sure it's it's the way I want it. I'm working, I'm going to be working with the artist to, to get the, the things out. But it's a, a seasonal book, so it's not going to come out until, like, next November because it's a Christmas-themed book. Um, but, again, it has opportunity to branch off from, you know, same from whatever in my head, how I, I imagine it. But I've been knocking things down, man. I've been adding and evaluating my goals, and everything I'm doing is a step closer to the end. I always wanted to do what Tyler Perry has done, is have my own studio where I can create and have people who are awesome at creating um, come and and be a part of it, kind of like Tyler Perry did. I was kind of jealous. I'm like, man, that's exactly what I wanted to do. But I want to, you know, because I've been so tired of the same plot lines, the same thing. There's so, I know there's so many people who have ideas. We can make movies that are dope. Like, what, what was that? Oh, um, uh, man. I can't think of that one stage. It might be stage six, but there, there is like a horror um, company that that's now like super legit, and the movies are legit. I can't think of who it was. I don't think it was stage six. Um, but anyway, for what's that? A twenty four Bloomhouse. Bloomhouse, yes, yeah, Bloomhouse. Like whenever I see their stuff, I'm like, oh, this gonna be a legit movie. I feel like Lionsgate was like that. But, you know, I just want a place where people, man, when when you know these movies are going to come out, you know it's going to be a great plot. You know it's going to be something original. And the visual visualization is dope. That's always been a goal of mine. I'm nowhere near that, but I'm taking steps to hopefully get there when I'm like 60, maybe hopefully sooner, but I'm taking steps. And and along the way, I'm trying to build, you know what I'm saying, a a thing of my own. Because like Ray said, I I got tired of working at 9 to 5. And I was told growing up, that's what I had to do. That that's the way. It was work for the man. Work work your way to work for the man. And I'm I'm so not for that no more because I have so many thoughts to make your business better. You don't want me to make your business better because I have people in place for that. I'm like, okay, but they haven't looked at it from this point of view. And because I'm not in that position, I can't do nothing. Like, you know what? Let me go and create my own. Let me if I want to make something better. I ain't got to make it under you. I can hurt for a few years. 
maybe a few months. Who knows? You don't know. But I'm all about, you know, setting those goals to make yourself and your your environment better and be happy uh and while doing it. So that's uh that's been my goal. That's the thing you said too though. You was like by the time you're sixty. Like people set some goals, man, and they they don't give themselves enough time to achieve them. You know what I mean? So like that's what I'm out I'll touch on too is like, you know, when you sit I mean when you set your goals for the year coming up, you gotta give yourself enough time to achieve them. If you're trying to whatever you're trying to do, you know, don't be unrealistic with it. Um, you know, if you're trying to make a movie or write a book or write a don't I gotta have my book done by April. Like like come on man, like you know, give yourself some time. You know, give yourself a chance to win too. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you know, if your goal is to make, you know, a hundred million dollars, you know, don't set that goal for this year. Like if I'm just being real, like you're not gonna make a hundred million dollars this year. But you know what? By the time you're sixty five, if you if you're in your twenties right now, maybe you could do it. You know, and then that helps you actually take the right approach to trying to make those goals and and build those building blocks. Like I think um, for me this year, one of the things that I'm trying to do is I think I'm going to try to run basically my first Kickstarter. I think in October for a new series that I want to bring out. So um, I'll be starting like just putting that together now. Like you know, people, you know, Kickstarter, even a Kickstarter, like. You know, you, you could technically just throw one up in a day, but um, the things that um, with Kickstarter is like the people that get their stuff funded and, and things in Kickstarter, they spend a lot. They spend a lot of time setting their Kickstarter up and getting the right rewards and the right visuals and things like that. So that's something I'll probably be working on for the most of the year, and then trying to launch it towards the end of the year. You know, depending on COVID and stuff, <laughs> but um. But, you know, that's definitely one of the things that I'm trying to do um, for this year coming up. And you should always, and like you said, reevaluating goals too. Like you can, um, you know, you can, if you see like maybe something's not right or like you're, you're not getting where you want to go or something like that, then you can always take time, you know, if you set your goals, one, write, write the things that you're trying to do out, um, trying to do, write them out. Um, so you have them, and then you can kind of always look back and say, okay, I need to, maybe I need to go about it this way, or maybe, you know what, that's not the goal. Um, maybe I need to switch it up. Like, you can you can switch it up, too, but as long as you're pushing, uh, you know, pushing towards whatever it is you're trying to do, like, uh, like I mean, I finally got that, my website up this year, um, which was uh, something that I was, you know, Took me a, took me a little longer than I than I wanted to, but you know, like like Ray said, he said the movie told you to give up on your goals, but yeah, if that's what you got from the movie, don't give up on your goals. Like you know, it took me a little longer to get my web to get the website up and running the way I wanted it, with um, being able to link it to where um, people can buy the comics um, without having to do much. Um, but I uh, finally got it, and it might have been uh, four or five months later than I wanted to get it up, but. I got it up, so you know that's definitely um, something to think about. You know, and besides that, I'm trying to um, hopefully, um, you know, I think the goal for this year will be there should be three more issues of eights are coming out for throughout the year um, this year, and uh, depending on conventions, um, my goal is definitely to hit up about six conventions this year. But we'll see how that goes because they might be all canceled again. Who knows? Uh, Man, just but, to go on that, the convention in Pittsburgh is is a go. I saw that for June and July. Yeah, that's a, a lot of them are like people. A lot of people are um, like a lot of them have it as a go. But you know, you never know. We go about what, yeah, thing, you know. But uh, hopefully that's the case. Uh, especially for because a couple conventions um, I've already paid technically because I was I got my tables but then they canceled them so I just rolled it over to next year so <laughs> oh yeah. yeah you paid for Blurcon already didn't you yep yeah so I just rolled it over for next year um, I did the same with the Three Rivers Con here in Pittsburgh and um, also for the um, is it Awesome Con or Heroes Con? I can't remember. I actually got to look at my end notes, but 
I basically already got three um, that I'm already set up for if they happen. So I just got to get those three more and uh, see where I want to go with them. But uh, but that's definitely some of the goals. And I think, the, like I said, the way to approach it is I think at some point in time this weekend, I'm just going to sit down and write write everything out that, that I'm really trying to do um, for this upcoming year. And I encourage other people to do the same. You know, you can always have the goal or the uh, thing in your head, and that's fine. But if you actually, like, you know, think about it like, you know, just, like, spending the same time on your goals that you would spend, like Newman said, if you're working for somebody else. Like, you spend, you know, most of us, um, we spend six, eight, some people 10, 12, 13 hours a day um, really trying to be diligent and working for other people. Um, so like, you know, treat your goals and stuff like a job, you know what I mean? So spend that time, you know, if you were going to deliver, if you had to deliver your goals to somebody to help you do them, would you just tell them or would you have that, take the time to, to actually give them the information that they need to help you get there? You should kind of be doing that for yourself with your goals. I think like just writing them out and, and going in detail, how am I going to, not just like, I, I want to do a Kickstarter. Um, in October, I got to sit down and write out, okay, I want to do a Kickstarter in October. What rewards do I want with it? Um, you know, right. who do I want to involve in the video? Um, what do I want to do as far as description? What, you know what I mean? When do I want to start putting materials together? What's a good day? You're putting all that down so you have a real roadmap to really try to hit your goals. You know, it's like people saying they want to lose weight, but then they don't write down like, they don't prepare like, okay, what am I going to eat? What am I going to work out? Mm -hmm. All that other stuff. They just, I just, I, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. And then they don't write anything out. They don't have any real plan. Then their plan is I'll just eat better and I'll exercise. And then it, it don't, nothing happens. <laughs> Cause you really didn't take, like you really didn't think about it, about the, the way you're going to, going to get to it. And I think um, that's one of the things that, I think people should really be doing, um, especially going into the new year, especially now. Who knows, man? The landscape's changed with COVID. That's for sure. And there's one thing that is unfortunate that I do know is that a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of rich people got a lot richer and a lot of broke people got a lot broker this year. So, uh, <laughs> so that's going to change the dynamics of a lot of things in industry, including movies and comics and stuff like that. So, when things, you know, like I said, there's a lot, when when things get kind of turned upside down like this, there's a lot of stuff laying around. If you're, if you're prepared, like I say, luck is basically preparation and opportunity coming together. So if you're prepared, there's probably going to be a lot of opportunities um, that are going to shake out of this because the entertainment industry in general is going to be kind of re- inventing themselves in many ways on how they're going to make money and how they're going to, to do things. Um, and so with that, there's probably going to be a lot of um, opportunity to, to jump into places or even possibly you can be first, uh, you might come up with something and be first to it and have the big companies copying you. So, but part of that being ready for those things is having those goals set and actually being on track to try to try to achieve it. And don't die when you make, when you hit your goal. Get off your phone. Please don't die when you make your goal. <laughs> <laughs> Get out you don't want to be a uh, it will change your entire perspective on it. And that ain't what we don't want. want. <laughs> you don't want to be a martyr for the cause? If you hit your goal, if you hit your goal, get off your phone until you get home to tell people. Yeah. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great takeaway from that damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off your phone. Man. Oh, no, but um, funny. I just want to add on real quick. Uh, the landscape is changing. So I've seen three things um, within the last couple of days uh, that's showing me that the landscape is changing. Screen Rant did a video on YouTube um we talked about how anime um, changed the world and how it, basically anime is really starting to rise in the U.S., um, which is a great thing. Um, 
the other thing that I saw, obviously, was that um, Noblesse got up high school and uh, what was the other? Tower of God were all turned into anime this year, um, yeah. which are webtoons. And third, I saw on webtoons official Instagram that that that's just the beginning. They have several projects lined up for the next few years to adapt their web their webtoons into series and movies. Yeah, what that means is that. Go ahead. Go ahead Go ahead. I was gonna say they got. What that means is... <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. What that means is that us as indie creators, now is our time. The landscape within these next five to ten years, it's showing that the world is ours to take. There are plenty of people who are who are itching for our stories to come out. And so now is really not the time to be dying by falling through manholes. Now, if someone does, like, rest in peace, I really apologize. I don't mean to be insensitive. But for the rest of us, get hit the ground running and move. All right? Damn. Good. Ugh. Man, you got me crying. <laughs> <laughs> if someone passed away in the manhole, we apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely time for um, indie creators, man. Take hold of that. But I do want to set a goal. Like it's, yeah, it's our it's our time now. DC and Marvel they're struggling. They they are, and they're trying to pick up the pieces as they can. But it's really with them crumbling, it creates a lot of pieces for us to put ourselves in and make room for ourselves at the table. It's, it's right. going to be great. Like no, the entertainment you gotta get, a, get at the table, though, is if you're actually working on the stuff you've been working on. You don't want to be late. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get there right. and then they ask where all the food is. So, like, yeah, we ate, dog. It was 8 o'clock. That's what <laughs> we said. Dinner time was at 8. It's 9.30, bro. Like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. For sure. But I do want to set a goal. If if things open up, you know, to where we can go, I definitely want to go as a uncultured uh, or um, cultured unmasked to one of these uh these comic cons or one of the cons, man. If things yeah. open, that's that's definitely a goal I want to do together where we can, you know, what I'm saying. After what a year? It's almost been a year since we started this. Yeah, yeah, that's how no, long it's been. been a year. Um, yeah, almost been a year. February, I think we did our first one. Yeah. We posted it in March, maybe. I gotta look back. Um, yep. But um, man, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we definitely gotta do that. And, you know, I don't want those those old same old. Yeah, I want to build build our. Pl Everyone wants that, you know. But like uh, actual. Uh, how are we going to do that? One. But one of those ways is, you know, go to one of these cons, expose ourselves. Like, expose ourselves. Man, let me just stop, man, because I'm about to get up. Yeah, hey, I'm about to expose <laughs> myself. I'm about to expose myself. <laughs> you do what you want to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a disclaimer. These are the views of uh <laughs> culture and man. <laughs> oh, you man. Something. You could get your own table. Me and Ray will sit at the table next to you. <laughs> hey, what's what's going on behind this curtain? Whoa. <laughs> they didn't warn me about that. There's a naked man back there. He's exposing himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, definitely. That's something um, you should definitely be looking into. And say we're talking about goals. Um, I'll be sending some stuff to you guys too, probably for the new year, with some goals for this podcast. So, um, but those are uh, right now between us, not the listeners. But um, definitely, I'm uh, looking to to uh, help this grow a lot lot this year coming up and I think I've got some ways we can do that. Absolutely. Yeah man. G O A L goals exposed. Oh, 
but yeah, that's about that's about all I got. I know we um we're trying to get Ozzy on here, uh, my artist for for this week, but it looks like um I might just have to catch him another time, and um and then um and just uh hit him with the interview uh later whenever he's got more time because he uh, looks like he can't make it. But um, that's about it then, I guess, for me. Um, you guys got anything else you want to add to goals? Nah, nah. Nah, I'm good. Coach, the um, Any shout-outs y'all want to give? Oh, uh, Ray, you got anything? I, um, honestly, I really don't this week, man. There's, um, so, I'm going to, Ray, you got anything? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have this uh girl, uh Chitown Chitown Diva twelve. Um she does a few different types of art styles, um more so realistic stuff. Uh she doesn't have a comic book at, that I know of, um but she's pretty cool. Um and then you you saw that Ch Chitown Diva. Um and then there's Fifth Power. Uh, this guy does a lot of really, really cool stuff. He doesn't have a comic book either, but, um, he has one of the coolest art styles that I know. It's like a, um, mixture of traditional painting with digital as well. Uh, he does, it's almost like graffiti art, um, but it's really stylistic and it's, it's just, it's really cool. And it looks like he does tattoos as well. So give him a shot. Fifth power. That's what's up. Cool. And I don't really have any shout outs for this week um, myself, but um, with that, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close it out. Um, Ray, you want to tell them where they can find you at again? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Ray's Arts, R A I Z underscore arts. Um, my commissions are open. Feel free to shoot me a DM there or email me at raise.d.arts at gmail.com. That's R-A-I-Z period T-H-E period A-R-T-S at gmail.com. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at, uh, C Newman 216. And if you're in the Pittsburgh area, you can soon find me on the streets at night with my uh, archery set. <laughs> we at Culture on Mass do not uh, endorse nor encourage vigilanteism. Uh, <laughs> Look for it. Yeah. I'll start our watch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, I'm Madison Hawthorne with Golden Street Publishing. You can catch us at Golden Street Publishing. That's the handle on Facebook and Instagram, or you can go to our website and get our Comics Unicorn Melee and Eta. This is a Samurai Story, uh, GoldenStreetPublishing.com. And then um, I guess until next time, peace. Peace. Adios.